So this is super interesting. I plugged the hula hoop in and plugged it into my computer and it has the name Phoenix and it has a whole bunch of uh, uh, BMP image files stored in it. And uh, I don't know, I've never seen this before. The uh, little PCP board, I couldn't really figure out what exactly is, um, you know, it's model make model brand was hard to find as in I didn't find it in the same form factor I found numbers so pointed to it and it seemed like it pointed to it telling me that it is a um, some sort of like a, uh, just on and off but whatever it obviously does more because it, it, it uses and has images stored on it so anyway if anybody knows what the uh, uh, you know what the board is I'll show you an image of it that'd be cool let me know I want to know because this is all very fascinating to me okay greetings uh, we got ourselves a hula hoop and uh, we have two of them to fix I don't know what's wrong with them other than they're not working as expected and they're LED hoops, so we have a plug here. All right, we're gonna see what we can do to try to fix these. So a viewer sent these, so let's see what we can do. All right, so just trying to plug this in. Keep you in the action. So right here they just plugs in. I'm assuming there's a battery in here somewhere. Oh yeah, let's see. There's a battery right here. So... It's got to be an on and off switch, right? Not super familiar with these things. <laughs> Give me a second. So I'm gonna grab the uh, other hula hoop. This is the other one. Different from the one you first saw. I'll plug this in. Okay, immediately there's something different. There's a light here. Can you see? Right there. The other one's not getting any power. Thing is, I still don't know how to turn this thing on, so I'm not really sure. Like, where's the on button for this thing? You know, I'm assuming there is an on button, but where? All right, I'm gonna dig around for a bit. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, this is what I see, right? I see a battery on this side here, an LED strip, I see a control board right here, more LEDs, a battery right here, and there's another battery right here. So it looks like... It's battery wire... Battery again... So it must be spread out, the batteries, to like, um... Not make it too unevenly worn. I mean, um, you know, wobbly run out, not run out, but you know, the weight has to be kind of distributed. And, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, there's five batteries. And this LED here, this hoop is, uh, it's a, it's got a collapsible hoop design, so there's a rivet right here. 
and uh, I have to cut that off if I want to go get on the inside of this. And uh, I, mean, I have nothing to lose. It's not like it's like I can't break it anymore. What I have to get access to the test is inside of this hoop. So I've got to get inside of there. Now I don't know what's the best approach. I need to try to minimize damage to the hoop itself. So I was thinking maybe I can try to grind it with a Dremel. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. So it looks like this rivet, whatever is on here, is like, uh, like plastic. Yeah, whoa, awesome. So, well, if it's not plastic, I mean, all right, there you go. I just kind of pushed it in. Ah, here we go, we're in. Oh, that's cool. It's like a, like a plasticky, rivety thing. Huh. Doesn't matter. All right, so LED terminates over here. Control boards on this side over here. And I mean, I think we're just going to pull all this out of there, aren't we? We have a screw or a Phillips screw that holds it on there. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do. full-on disassemble. So this thing's really difficult to work with. We're gonna have to mark this because this insert here we are gonna have to put back. So I'm gonna make a square here and a circle here. Okay. Now we need to. It looks like I'm trying to figure out how this thing is put together. But this here, some kind of. I don't know if it's like a push pin. How about this? I know for sure we got to get that screw out, right? So let's get that screw out. <clears throat> so there's a screw here. It's a Phillips screw. That was weird. Okay, it is spinning. That was strange. like
Ah, there we go. Okay, so that. Gotcha. It's pretty cool. Oh, it's called. That's it. It's a cool design. As long as I don't move that, it's keyed, so I don't have to worry about that getting lined up. This is unscrewed, so I should should be able to kind of reach in there and grab. All right, let's get this out of here. Ooh. There's our PCB board. Hmm. I think we should just take this whole thing out. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, so this is like super frustrating. Um, this obviously uses DC power, right? It uses a board here, right? Now, LED lights, you know, from what I'm reading spec-wise, usually run about from 12 to 24 volts, right? I have a desktop power supply here. Right, and I try to power this by just connecting directly to these tabs here. Um, right, because if you look closely, that's well, a little hard to see, but there is a positive here, five volts, and a ground there. And I thought I can just, you know. Just touch on those, right? To power it. It didn't work. Some frustrated, right? So here's the thing, I see batteries, right? So you know we we counted them together. Remember? So one, two, probably off camera, three, four off camera, and five, right? And these batteries are <clears throat> I don't know where they so you follow the train of thoughts here. These are 3.7 volts. Oh, okay. So look, okay. So if these are 3.7 volts, right? Let's say, uh, let's say four volts each, right? One, two, three, four. We have five of them. So that's about, uh, what, 20, 20 volts, right? So it's a little bit below. So it's probably like, maybe like 18 point something volts. Let's see. I'll use my calculator here. So it's 3.7 volts. We're looking at it's gonna be 18.5 volts, right? Max. That's what this thing should use. Um, well, I was trying it at 12 volts to power it with the DC desktop bench top. Ah, the bench top power supply didn't work. So maybe that was the problem. I needed to go a little higher. Either way, I plugged it in, I charged it, right? And now, right, here's no now we'll see the problem. By the way, that's the that's the on and off button right there. Alright, so we're gonna turn this on. Right, let's see, come on. Oh God, this is working. Okay, so it was working. Then unplug it. Let's try it now. Oh, there we go. Okay, see, so it works. See the issue? I mean, it works up to here. So we have ourselves a bit of a problem, right? That problem, I bet you that's the root cause of why this hula hoop 
was requested for me to repair. So let's draw a line right here. And now we know what we need to do to try to solve this. Okay, we had to figure out why we can't get power past that. All right, and uh, you know, since this is on right now, let's just throw the multimeter. Let's turn this on here. Let's see if we can get a reading for how much volts is coming down this pipeline here. So. That's just three point nine. Okay, so it's three point nine volts. It's coming in all the way down let's see so this is right before it stops well I can't get to it because there's plastic there oh, okay and there's no plastic right here oh whoa 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 did you see that? Oh. Well, looky here, there's a loose connector somewhere here. I just squeezed it and it just fixed itself. Well, that's not fun. <laughs> there's also, it's all lit up back there, but there's another loose connection over here. Let's find that. I got to right here. Okay, so it looks like there needs to be some kind of uh, something's happening somewhere right here and down there. All right, we'll we'll uh, we'll take a closer look. I saved it to see if it'll happen again. So this is the last half, and I just kind of marked it. See if uh, if the same thing will happen again. So somewhere here, there is a. There's a break somewhere. There is no power to get into there. So let's just see what we got here. So from here to here, we've got point six volts. volts. Okay. It's 2.8 and it drops off. I don't know. We have 2.8. Is the LED broken? What's this? Let's go a little further down. I have 2.8 volts here too. So something is different. 2.8 volts here. And 2.8 
volts there. Let's go up a little further. All right, so we have voltage all the way. I wonder if we have voltage at the very, very end. You know? So, so power all the way down here. You can definitely tell I'm way more comfortable dissecting this thing today than I was the first time I looked at it. I'm trying to find one of my lethal razors. Oh. Just hanging out, waiting to cut me. with the uh, with values we get here. And so we have we have voltage all the way to the very very end. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Did not anticipate that. So why does it not liked all the way down. That's really the question. You know? I don't know. We'll uh we'll figure it out, right? Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't really make much sense right now. We'll have to take a little closer look at it and see. It's gonna be a little hard to show you what I'm doing. I'll do my best. So on the uh, LED, right, the light itself, there is, because it's broken again. Um, so it starts here, and you can't see it. It starts here, but it... Big gap, and then it ends right there. So it's, it's, it's back to being broken, right? And... I'm going to show you what I find. So on the LED light itself, there are like three electrodes coming in. The one on the left side, right? So if you watch them, they'll put this is this is in volts DC. Let's see volts DC. That's right here. Sorry, so you can see. It's a little tricky. Come on, focus. 20 volts DC. Up. That's better. Alright, so when I go on the LED itself, right here, oops, get in your way. We'll see, I get like 2.9, 2 point something volts, 2 point, 2, 2 2.19 volts, right? So that's where the load is. Same thing with this LED over here. So these are the two outside connectors. So I have three. There's one in the middle, one at the end. It's tricky to do when you're in the way, but... Come on. Will that work or what? 
It's definitely not working. Anyway, all right, you saw the values from this one. Right. If I move down to a light that doesn't turn on, like this, there's still power. Right, but it's higher. It's 3.6. Now that makes sense because there's no power being used, right, at this light because this load in the circuit is off, right? And I bet you if I went to this load here, I would see the same two point something volts. Now, how am I getting power to here and nothing in between here? Obviously, it means that there's something stopping power from transferring all the way down to here, right? I need to figure out what that is. So I had cut back this uh, a little bit here just to test and see what values we get. So look right here. Right. And I'm measuring on the copper strips. And they have a value, so 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. I am unsure what's happening right now. Um, yeah, I might have a, a loose connection somewhere here, but where is here? That's the problem. Yeah, all right, trying to figure that out. All right, so I had some uh, information, more information on this. Uh, this is all new to me, working with LEDs, so we're learning together. All right, uh, the LED, LED itself is just acting really weird. You know, you have random spots that it's like connected. Other, other times it's not. I'm checking continuity in between the places. Like say if it's like, if right here is the failure point, it's dark from then on. I'm checking to see like what's happening on the other side over here. Do I have voltage? I do and the light doesn't work, or I'll have like one spot of light here and no lights here, and then no lights there. You know, it's all over the place, the way this thing is failing. And I have this charging overnight, so let's see what it does today. So it always, see it fails right here again, right? Same spot. And, uh, see, and there's no more, it's not lit anywhere else, right? And, I've, I, you know, I've done things like, uh, you know, I've, I've just, I've bridged it before, uh, with like a piece of wire. Basically, I've done a lot, a lot of things, right, to try to get this to work. And I haven't been successful, right, because I'm not, to me, I mean, I'm thinking like, I can use something like this right here. If there's a connection issue, right, and I can go from here, which I know has power to there, and it doesn't do anything. And these are the outer tabs, right? This is these are the ones that are ground. They're labeled ground, and they're labeled uh, uh, yeah. So these are the ones that are labeled the ground and uh, they don't seem to yield any difference, you know, like the LED itself just doesn't, doesn't want to get charged or powered past this point. And uh, this LED here has turned on, the, you know, did, did it just move down some? I don't know. Well, either way, it's uh, with a multimeter. I have I have power getting all the way down to here with a multimeter. Uh, that's a fact. And uh, you know, 
I just don't really know what's going on. You know, like, I just don't know. And I, even, even if I placed, uh, like, you know, two, you know, if I complete the circuit on both sides, I'm still getting nowhere, that's what I'm saying. And, uh, yeah. So what does that mean, all right? Uh, I'm thinking that uh, the way this is constructed, it just has the LED sitting on top of uh, this, this foam, and it's wrapped in some plastic sheath, all right? This LED here, I have to I have to look it up, but I believe right I found it online, and it's uh, it comes in like 16 feet rolls, which makes sense because uh, I assume that the uh, person that uh, company that made this bought it, bought it from this source because this is a uh, actually it's like 15 point something feet, and this is a. Uh, half of that so every roll gets you two hoops of this specific diameter which is an ideal diameter for hula hoopers the next thing right is uh you have to measure how many lights per meter that's how they sell it they come in different quantities per meter and uh that's what we need to figure out so we got to count how many lights per meter and then we'll go from there and then we can I'm going to make a request for some information about this from the manufacturer of that uh, LED I mean sorry the uh, the source of the LED and see if uh, this LED is the right one it's apparently it's called it's called a programmable yeah it's it's a programmable LED and um uh, it's it's full colored, so it's like it's ten millimeters in in width. So that works out to be uh, 0.3955 inches. So so it's ten millimeters in width. And uh, yeah, we need to uh, just figure out uh, how many lights per meter. Turn it on again, you see what I mean? Green LED, two random ones open. Available over there. I'm gonna show you what two. Just to try to close these. Uh, so that way you can kind of see what I'm working with. can't get this thing to work so I think I'm making a call this strip is broken in a way that is not really repairable um, it's just faulty you know and uh, it would be in our best interest to replace this strip we can solder it out from right here, so it gets its power from the the board, the controller board. So we're just gonna unsolder it and resolder a new one in. Yep, I think I think that's the uh, that's the protocol. That's the way to go. So it's been several weeks, more like uh, about two months since we uh, last looked at this project, right? And I want to show you. A lot, you know, a lot of things have happened. Some very bad things, and here we are still. So, parts were her. I had to figure out stuff like you know. So I think the LED is broken. So I got a new LED from China, and uh, a real con really funny conversation with. Uh, a woman named, uh, I don't even know if it's a woman, but somebody named Coco. So I'll probably show you some parts of that conversation in an email that I was having back and forth with Coco in China. And uh, so Coco sent me this. 
And I also spoke to the, uh, I'm assuming like a reseller or someone close to the original manufacturers of this like uh, PCB board programmers, you know, designers, and uh, had a correspondence with them too. But here we are, right? We have uh, a new LED strip. I just want to give you the backstory. And um, it's a little different from the one that's on here, right? The one that's on here, the ground cable, the ground is at the bottom. This one, the ground's at the top. And the five volt is at the top over here. It's at the bottom down here. So I'm gonna have to solder this in, but do a wire here to jump across these two and pray for the best. All right, before I cut it, because this comes in a, in a spool like this, I'll show it to you. It comes in a spool like this. So before I cut this, right, I'm gonna just, because I probably can cut it anywhere I want, but I'm just gonna like uh, wire this up properly and turn it on and test it and see what happens. All right. All right, so we are going to have to try to pull this sheet back and see what's under here, right? So this comes with a strip, self-adhesive self strip. There we go. Those are the solid wires, right? All right. So ground and power. These two right here, we can totally keep them. But what we want to do is get rid of the other ones, right? Because we should be able to kind of just solder them onto the board. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's give it a try. I have to like unsolder all of these, so. We'll flex them all of them. That's free. Those two wires are out of the picture. I got that one's out. That one's gone. So that one. Makes sense. Yeah. Probably can't even see too well, can you? Is that better? Probably. Myself. And we're gonna see it. Come on, get off, get off there, get off there. Holy cow. That was difficult. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this to the side and then we're gonna get our new LED strip, right? We're gonna just ever so sneak this on. And my thoughts are, I'll look at the original, right?
The C1 and the D1 are all in the same location. That's good. It is the ground and the 5 volts. Arr. So, how do we do this? Like here, like that. And then we'll just get a wire and then jump it over. What do you think? Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so there's some pins right here at the back. You know what? Let's expose those even more. The copper parts. So those are our friends. All right. So let's I think that should be enough to maybe we can freshen up this a little bit. That's some flux we just added. Freshen up, give it a little bit more. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm trying to get the uh, pins. Separate. doing is getting the copper to, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, the solder to be, uh, just don't want them to connect. So having a little bit of a hard time here. So let's see if we can clean this up. This is some really cool stuff. Just copper wick. Okay, there you go. Okay. So it's just wick. It's just a uh, copper wick. If you wanted to know. Okay, so those look a lot better. All right. What we'll do now, right, is we'll come in. I like to do the hardest stuff first. So let's go.
All right, we did it. Think it's gonna work? I don't know. Wow, this is crazy. We finally did it. Let's try it. Let's turn it on. Let's see. Let's, let's drop out a little bit wider. Let's see what this does. I charge it a little bit. Whoa. Oh my god. Are <laughs> you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, that thing worked. Yep. All right, we're good. Let's just go ahead and charge this for a little bit and I'll bring you back. This is kind of exciting, I couldn't wait. Um, so I just plugged it in here and turn it on so you can see. You can, can see it, uh, it totally, uh, it can address all of the lights. So this, I would say, is uh, we're moving in the right direction. This is functional, this is working. Um, the next difficult thing, right, is going to be the, there's, a, there's like a sheath. Some kind of like plastic sheath. I don't know how to save this thing, you know? Um, so we're gonna kinda have to like cut it and put it on and fandangle it and stuff. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, it's looking good. We did a good job so far. So I'm just gonna spend some time uh, cutting this out. Um, of the sheet. So the, it's the old one here. It's gonna, just, it's like it's stuck to it. My plan is cut it out, right? And then glue it back together. Not glue, I mean, uh, just, you know. Tape it. Jesus, I just realized I messed up. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> These don't match to the... Uh, I thought I was so cautious. What do I mean by that do not match? Look. See that? See the difference? Three to two. Well, that's gonna be a problem. All right. See you in like two weeks. All right, so our next step, right, is to count the amount of LEDs on the old one, and then we're gonna cut the same amount at the same location, okay? And, uh, you know, just to let you know, it's been seconds for you, but weeks for me. And uh, this is the new strip, just same thing. You can see that uh, this now matches. Let's uh, zoom down a little. And uh, you can see that this has the same amount of LEDs per meter or inch. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll count it and then cut it. This is the old one. All right, so after counting, uh, it actually is truly 30 LEDs per strip. I mean per uh, meter. And uh, you see the, uh, I want to show you something about the, uh, See that right there? So in between this and the other that is right here, there's 30 LEDs, so that's how you can know. So we have 146 LEDs. Now we're gonna have to cut them right here. And we're going to do that with some scissors. We're gonna cut right here. There's no going back once we do this. So there we go. Alright, that's it. Alright. So I was feeling a little reluctant to do this, right? But we need to kind of secure this to the control board a little bit better. And to do that, I'm gonna just use some hot glue. Now 
this you know ultimately creates a problem for future repairs of this so you know you use it do it at your own discretion but I do recommend we do that only because I don't want this to kind of like slide all over the place I would like to give it a fighting chance you know what I mean so All I'm doing is just really trying to hot glue the um, the wires, the LED to the board. It sounds like my stomach, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a blackbird outside doing blackbird things. I try to get a video of it, but I was not covert enough. Anyway, so that should be it. And uh, I'm gonna kinda try to put this back together inside the hoop now. So I wanna get a little bit of glue under this. And that should be enough. We had to spend some time, right, and just kind of like place this back into sheath like this, you know. And uh, the thing is, I couldn't find any like uh, what do you call it, like uh, replacement plastic tubing for this. So we're just gonna have to kind of go like that. Seat it back in the best we can, right? And then we're gonna put some tape around it. All right, so I don't wanna bore you with this, but you get the idea. We'll have to do that for a while. So this is a real pain in the butt. Um, I just wanna share my system. It's gonna take, it's tedious and it's gonna take a while. So I get some tape. I place it right here. I can have it ready. And I have to get the wire underneath. And this, all of this has to lay underneath the plastic like sheath right? that we took off. And uh, since I don't have Replacement. I have to just kind of reuse this, so I take the wire and the wire I slide back in between the foam, and then this has to go on top of it like that, and then this rides on top of that. And this blue thing stuff here is 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 is, is, is a tape that you stick on top of there. But we're not doing that. Uh, it's, we're just gonna go just like this every couple millimeters, several millimeters or so, or inches. Like that. So let's, you're gonna do that the entire way down. Like I said, it's pretty tedious labor of love that's happening for this for me. Alright, for the most part, this is all done now. Uh, this is from the back. And what I did, right, is uh, see where the battery is right here? Put some tape right here, tape right here, just to help pull that together. And I'm just gonna go back and do the same. So wherever the battery is located, it's gonna put some tape right here. Flip it over so you can see. 
just want to just give this battery a little bit of support, you know, like that right there. And so go to where the battery is located. Do the same thing. Pretty tedious and frustrating because it keeps flipping around on itself, you know. And, you know, there's a chance to kind of fix places like that. Any John Wick fans out there? John Wick 4? Yeah, I saw it. I've got to say, that's the last time I'll ever watch anything that crazy. It, uh, it was like I was watching a video game, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, getting hit by cars and multiple times, and you know, nobody ever get in the memo that you know you can just take a headshot, and that would be the end of the story. <laughs> you know, like oh, let's just shoot him where he has a bulletproof suit on. It makes a lot of sense. And just so you know, when you get shot with a gun, depending on the uh, caliber, right, it does put a lot of force. Force has to stop somewhere. All the momentum has to go somewhere. And so the energy right, is going to get distributed into what it impacts. So even if you're a bulletproof vest, you're going to feel a whole... Like, it feel like someone punched you really hard. And uh, harder than the hardest person can punch. So you can only do that but so many times before you are going to have some sort of like internal bleeding. You know? Uh, and... Uh, I can tell you that uh, Keanu Reeves got shot many, many times. So, either way, it was just too far, too far gone. It was too extreme. You know, if you're gonna do something that extreme, you might as well go ahead and, uh, you know, just make him out to be something like a Wolverine or something like that. You know, not a not a regular average human being. I mean, I, he, there's just no human that can can do what he's doing, you know what I mean? So it just feels like it should be sold as something else, instead of like a super awesome human that can, you know, do those things, get hit by cars multiple times, or thrown downstairs without any broken bones or concussions and stuff. Just make him into uh, an X-Men or something like that, you know? Just go all out, versus just trying to keep it inside of this weird human James Bond super cool dude genre it just doesn't work anymore you know it's just too extreme so that's the end of that for me it's like I couldn't suspend my disbelief I wish they had just turned it into a an awesome you know superhuman uh, you know movie sci-fi because that's what it felt like all right cool I'm done with that genre hope you liked Jean Week I liked it also but I'm not going to watch it ever again or anything like that if they're not trying to, again, turn it into just like a, like an X-Men or something like that. All right, so we got to come in like this and go that way, right? And the reason why, it's because this has a... Oh, make sure you can plug in. No glue gets in there. Yeah, we're good, right? Okay. So that, right, is going to be, oop, whoa, 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 slow down there, buddy. All right, cool, it's off. All right, well, it's good, it works. <laughs> All right, so we need to get that in here like that because that charging hole is right there. And, uh, yeah, so we got to get a strategy, right, because we have to keep... A lot going on here, ladies. All right, like okay, here we go. I got it. We got to go in like this. I don't know if we have to do. Oh, it'll work. It'll slide right in. That's nice. I was thinking I'm gonna have to tie a string, and uh, I gotta pull the string through. Uh, you know. Sometimes you win at life. Sometimes. Anyway, 
Sorry for my John Wick rant. <laughs> Not really, but you're hanging out with me. You know what to expect. It's getting harder. Yeah. Oh boy. I gotta focus here. Don't want to break the uh, LED. bet you compressed air would be wise to use. And yeah, let me test it. Let me test uh, compressed air. that'll work. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Let's give it a try. We have to lose. Just, just some rope. Think that'll work? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Let's give it a try. We have to lose. Just, just some rope. Yes. If it was longer, would <laughs> and cut it too short, probably would have. 
fit itself through, right? Yeah. Almost. Just gonna give it a little bit more help. Just a little bit. Alright, that's pretty close to grabbable. There it is. Come on. Oh. I will win today. Come on. There we go. That knot is a lot of friction. It's giving me doubts about how easily we're going to be able to pull the, the hoop through, you know? I think it's going to, I think it's going to fight us. Everything about this tells me it's going to fight me. Come on. I think it's going to, this is what I predict is going to happen. It's going to rip right out of there in the entire Entire plans of failure. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's sick. It's bunching up. Yeah, I'm pulling. Alright, so we got ourselves clamped up in the vise. Hoping I can kind of like do two things at once, you know? So I can pull and push at the same time. Yeah, that's working a lot better. Oh, and the knot came through, so one less difficult point of friction for us to get over. Don't get me wrong, it's it's like it's difficult, but it's way, way more practical and possible now doing it this way than before. So I tell myself, let's see. Trust me, it's hard. ripped out. I have this much to go. Damn. Alright, so we gotta come with a different plan. I can't go forwards anymore without damaging it. So we gotta pull it back out. Try something else. Powder? Powder. Yeah, powder. Right? Like a little talcum? Mm-hmm. What do we think? A little powder? Let's try it real quick. Let's just toss some powder down in there. Just kind of a little silicone spray, maybe on the back side. I mean, you don't really see. I don't know. As you can see, I'm struggling with this. I'll bring it back if I succeed. Dude, this is super weird. I just left this project alone for four days. I mean, a week. 
Look at this. <laughs> it's just slide right in. I thought I was gonna come down here and fight with this thing. What the heck is going on? Why is it easy to go in today? I don't know. With the humidity? Wow, this is so strange. It's like almost there. You know, I, I think. I came down here prepared for a fight. <laughs> I didn't even, my belt's not even on. <laughs> I came down here literally to fight with this thing and it's just sliding right in. I, I love life. Life is wild like that. You just step away for a moment. If anybody has any idea why this is happening, do let me know. Alright, so I want to just kind of describe where I'm at. It's right there. That's all I need to pull through. And this here is kind of sticking out that much, right? So I don't really have all my tools with me. So let's talk about what we got. We got that end, control board, and that much we have to get through, right? So I finally got the right tool. Yes. Right? It's one of those small needle nose tools, right? And <laughs> Was that the tool? It was at the toolbox. See, when you leave this thing for a couple of days, a couple of hours, what the heck? I don't even need the tool. Well, that's weird. It just pushes it through. Uh, listen, okay, let me explain what's happening because I thought about this. When you push it in, right, because the, di the, the width of this is so wide, what happens is it bunches up. Right, when it bunches up, it, it, it pinches on the side. So being in the tube, the tube kind of shapes it down. And it's plastic, so it doesn't hold a shape for too long. So this is absolutely this is this is 24 hours later, and that, and that just happened. Now. I thought I was going to have to come in here and grab it and pull on it and all that stuff. Well, that's not true. All right, so well, not yet. Anyway, we have to keep going going all right till we get don't want to go too far because, you, know, you know we don't want to go too far because we have to get this lined up the on and off switch so ah <laughs> did I just do that Christ let's see can I go the other way all right there is hope so be careful Careful, this can work in your favor. Yep, be careful. It just got really tight, so. You do need this just to kind of like fine tune the end position. Okay, so you know, it's all lined up mostly. Let's see, we gotta. USB button there, charge port right there. And so that's it. So our, for the most part, this is how that should be. So <clears throat> we gotta get uh, a very small Phillips screw into here. Well, this is gonna kill me, but uh, I found it. Right? It's it was on the tray, but it's like super small and flat-headed. But I put the tray. I'm gonna place in a tray underneath this, so like that way. Because you know this thing is gonna go flying somewhere. You can you can feel it already. Let's turn the light on so I can see even better. Oh, I just washed you out. Alright, hold on. That's gonna be a little bit better.
There we go. So I have to kind of reach in there and lift up like that. Just needed to. All right, so that's so that's not going to move. Yeah, we're good. All right, next thing is this thing. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Just kind of press that in. That locks into there. Turn that off. See that? Kind of locked into here. And then we take the other half of this here. This is where it gets interesting because I've got a rivet. I've got to rivet this in. We need to rivet this together over here. All right, so right here, right, is a hole. That hole lines up with that hole right there. And we need to get a rivet that goes into there. All right, so we need to get a rivet, right? And this is what a rivet looks like. And they come in different uh, lengths and uh, and d uh, girth. So you want to make sure that you get a really tight fit with whatever hole you're trying to go into. So like that, that's going to work really well, right? And uh, the tighter the fit on the... Um, the hole the better for the rivet, right? So let's get this, let's see, make sure that can get work. I don't know, I think it's gonna work. Okay, you're gonna need a, a rivet gun. And you just kind of like insert it into there. There you go. So we're in, right? Ha, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Who we're doing this. There's no turning back. Well, you could. But we don't want to try to get you in for the finale. Okay, so you push it all the way down, right? Make sure it's nice and flat, right? And you go ahead and start to pull, and that's it. That should totally hold that those two pieces together. That's what that's what the rivets do. So this is the moment you've been waiting for. Let's see if we have a successful repair. All right, let's get a find where the on and off switch is. All right, there we go. You ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Ho, 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 ho! Look at that! That is amazing. We did it. We totally killed it. Yeah? We fixed a very expensive LED hula hoop. All right, hey, listen, if you liked the video, go ahead and say, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, or a thumbs down, whatever you want talk about it. Let me know what you think we could have done better. It was really fun trying to fix and create a functional hoop again. And if it's good to you, helpful to you, let me know. And other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. It's fun trying to fix this thing. Crazy. So let's talk about it one more time just to regroup. The, uh, the part of the issues I was having was the, uh, the width of the LED created a lot of friction, but if you put it in, let it sit for 24 hours, then push, push it in, let it in sit for another 24 hours, you'll be able to push it all the way through. That's what we learned, and it was painful. And uh, any tools that I have, I'll go ahead and link, check the link below, so that way you can get them. So it'll give you uh, the needle nose pliers and the um, those things, the rivet gun. All right, cool. And I'll try to get the rivets for you size also. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next video. Happy hooping. All right, here's the information about the rivet. So the, it's in millimeters, so you're gonna have to convert it, or not. It's uh, 3.1 millimeters in girth, and that's gonna look like 0 0.1230 inches. And then the length of it is something like approximately
0.358, a little less, 0 0.358, 0 0.337 inches, and that's going to be 8.75 millimeters. Okay, so that's the rivet, that's the rivet size you want.